The movie begins with a man named Nobuo Tanaka getting a flu shot and some medicine from the local clinic as he's not feeling well. He then goes to his workplace which is a big lab that researches new drugs. Upon entering, the receptionist asks if he's feeling better, but Nobuo says he'd rather work than being alone in his room all day. While working, Nobuo keeps sneezing. His supervisor jokingly says he'll trigger the biological containment or biocon alarm. He then tells him to try out all cold medicines that they have at the lab. Nobuo says he has tried them all, so his co-worker suggests that he try a new anti-fever drug they're developing in the chief's office. Later, Nobuo wants to deliver some documents to the chief, but he's not in his office. He places the files and sees the red pills in a blue jar that has trial written on it, the pills that his co-worker said were the newly developed anti-fever drug. He decides to take three of them. After a while, the receptionist and her co-worker are chatting when they start to smell a weird but pleasant odor. Meanwhile, the chief enters the lab in a panic, asking who entered his office and touched the drug samples. The supervisor says that Nobuo took the drug samples, which causes the chief to panic even more and demanding to know where Nobuo is. His co-worker tells the chief that he is taking a nap in the guest room because he wasn't feeling well. It turns out that the medicine isn't an anti-fever medicine. As the chief runs out of the lab, the others start to smell the weird odor as well. When Nobuo finally wakes up, it's already morning the next day. In a panic, he gets out of the guest room to check into work. However, nobody seems to be in the office. Suddenly, he sees the receptionist slumped over her table. He is shocked to find out that she's actually dead, as well as everyone in the office. Horrified, he calls an ambulance and the police to investigate the lab. He wonders if a chemical incident had happened, but the biocon alarm should have been triggered. As he comes to the chief's office, he sees the chief's body in front of the biocon switch, which seemed to have been turned off. When Nobuo turns the system on again, the alarm and containment protocol immediately commences. The chief's computer turns on to accept a call from a man calling the chief, wanting to know what happened. The man gets frustrated when he sees the chief lying dead from the CCTV feed, and gets a brief explanation about the bizarre situation from Nobuo. He orders Nobuo to bring certain medicines and files to the company's headquarters in Tokyo. The man is the head of the company's new medicine development named Neurosaki. He wants nobody to know about the incident yet as it might be related to a new drug that the government had ordered them to secretly develop. As Nobuo gathers the stuff, he finds out that the secret drug is the one that he had taken yesterday. He gets somewhat worried, but decides to pack everything in his briefcase and leaves the office using a bicycle. Nearby, he sees a flock of flying birds suddenly dying. One of the birds fall right on his face, causing him to crash over a cliff. When he opens his eyes, he sees all kinds of animals dying all around him yet all the flowers are blooming at the same time. Nobuo climbs up to reach the road and sees a crashed ambulance nearby. When he goes over to check, he is horrified to see the medics lying dead inside, just like his co-workers in the lab. He realizes that it's not just the ambulance, but many other cars along the road that he's on. In Tokyo, Nirosaki and the company's president named Kamada visit a military base filled with Japanese and also American personnel. They brief the generals about the incident and how it might be related to the drug that the Japanese and American governments requested to be made. Meanwhile, reporters have started gathering near the highway to Kofu City as the citizens of Kofu start to be evacuated by the army. Nobody knows what's going on or what that odor is, even news helicopters flying miles above the city can barely stand the stench using gas masks. One of them sees Nobuo waving a flag on a building's rooftop, and they decide to rescue him. Once they land the helicopter, the reporter approaches Nobuo but immediately gets killed by the odor. The cameraman dies too. Nobuo shouts for help to the camera before it cuts off. In the army base, the generals receive a report from the special forces they sent to the scene that the center of the gas is moving. The company executives tell the generals that they tasked Nobuo to bring the files and samples to Tokyo. The generals are shocked that there's a single survivor from the area. They realize that Nobuo might be the source of the calamity. Back in Kofu, the army is done evacuating the city when they see Nobuo walking in the distance. They decide to evacuate him too, but when the soldiers approach him, they immediately die. There's a green mist following Nobuo, and the army concludes that he is the one making the smell. They decide to retreat, leaving Nobuo who runs after them. This conclusion is also confirmed by the army base, with Nirosaki theorizing that the substance in the drugs had a reaction with another chemical in Nobuo's body when he ingested the drugs, causing the deadly odor which changes in intensity according to his mood and metabolism. Nobuo eventually rides a motorcycle towards Tokyo to deliver the files and medicine as instructed. 
The Japanese army wants to kill him to prevent the spread of the odor, but the American general wants to catch Nobuo alive as they've invested a lot of money to the drug research. Nobuo stops riding when the army starts to shoot at him. He even gets targeted by missiles, which he miraculously dodges. Dozens of war planes and helicopters all try to shoot him down to no avail. Nobuo just keeps riding towards Tokyo, even managing to wreck the electrical systems of the tanks and planes using his odor. As he survived all attacks launched at him, the army base turns chaotic and everyone is preparing for Tokyo to be evacuated. Meanwhile, the American general plans to send in a team from NASA using anti-radiation spacesuits to try and capture Nobuo. On the road to Tokyo, the Japanese army plans to freeze Nobuo in a tunnel by obstructing the entrance while blowing cold air through the other end. The NASA team arrives and enters the tunnel. Nobuo sees them and gets scared by their menacing look. It causes his body to produce an odor so bad that it destroys the army's machinery, forcing them to retreat. However, it appears that the NASA team somehow survived from the security footage. The odor's intensity decreases as well. The generals congratulate the astronauts when one of them arrives at the base. He is carrying Nobuo's briefcase. When the astronaut turns off his face shield, it turns out to be Nobuo, who doesn't seem to know that he's the source of the catastrophe. The movie ends with everyone running away before Nobuo opens his spacesuit. That is the end of the recap, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and see you in the next video.